So I reached out to the intellectual wizards on my course and asked them how the hell they all managed to score in the top 5% in the UCAP. Come on, what are you telling me? My name is Marius and in this video I got in touch with people on my course, all of whom scored in the top 5% of results in the UCAT in the year we took it. I basically said, yo, what are you telling me? You got any tips for my 41 subscribers? They want to know how you managed to score in the top 5% so that they might be able to also. So just to put that in context and to give you some evidence for what I'm chatting about, this is a freedom of information request uh, I found online and the lowest score for for the the UK cat in my year so the donkey the donkey of my year got 2930 um, which just to show you the deciles is above the top decile um, for 2020 so these are some of the scores from the people that I asked how they managed to bang the UK cat um, this is obviously Marius's score um, pretty decent definitely in the top 10% um, and this is my missus score um, so she obviously uh, did a lot better than me and maybe she should be doing this video instead so after I collected the responses from my colleagues I've grouped them into various categories so if you want to skip around if you're sick of the sound of my voice or you want some tips on a certain topic but not others then just jump around as you wish so the first tip is to use keyboard shortcuts so time is at an extreme premium in the UCAT um, just to illustrate that so for verbal reasoning you have 44 questions in 21 minutes so that's about 30 seconds per question the one that you have the least time on is of course abstract reasoning you can see here that you have 14.18 seconds to do a question and move on so my point is time is at a premium and you want to work out ways that you can be as efficient as possible so that you can save time and get through enough questions to get you a good score and keyboard shortcuts are a good way to increase your speed during the test so these are the keyboard shortcuts down here um, you can see that there's one that brings up the calculator one that activates the number keypad you can skip to the next question or the previous question and you can also flag a question if you're spending too much time on a question and you need to move on but you want to look at it again at the end so just to demonstrate these four or five keyboard shortcuts um, I've come on to a practice test on Medify um, so if we were to bring up the calculator Alt C yeah that brings up the calculator um, I don't personally have a, a numpad on this so, so in the run up to the test I'd recommend getting a keyboard that you can practice um, using the numpad on for the calculator so if we skip to the next and the previous question we go Alt N yeah that goes to the next one and Alt P that obviously goes to the previous one and the final one we want to try is to flag a question so if I don't know what the hell this is I'll probably put an answer like can't tell and go Alt F flag it for review Alt N to the next question and then if we go to the end we can go down here and say review flagged um, and then review that question that we flagged before and that's basically the keyboard shortcuts so the next tip that someone gave me was do not be a perfectionist and we actually had a couple of votes for this particular tip um, basically don't be like this guy perfect Peter um, firstly obviously because he's a snake um, he's always snaking out Henry and Brainy Brian all the man them but secondly being a perfectionist in the exam is not the ideal strategy because easy questions are worth the same amount of marks as hard questions so if you're dwelling for ages on a very hard question because you really want to get it right um, you're basically just going to waste your your own time and end up not being able to finish that particular um, set of questions and then you'll shoot yourself in the foot so there's no honor in being a perfectionist and dwelling on the hard questions if you've spent what you think is about the right amount of time um, on, a, on a hard question and you still haven't got it just flag it Alt F or whatever 
and, and move on to the next one. So the solution that my colleague gave me for this, who, by the way, he is a UCAT wizard. He loves to think about this kind of crap. Um, the solution he gave me was to set these marker intervals. So if we refer back to this table I gave you earlier, um, you have roughly that amount of time, you know, you have roughly 30 seconds for verbal reasoning per question, um, about a minute for decision making, 40 seconds for, for QR, and 14 seconds for AR. So you want to set a, a kind of marker interval um, say for example in abstract reasoning you want to be on about question 10 at about 2 minutes and 20 seconds and you want to be on question 20 at about 4 minutes and 40 seconds and I've worked these out based on how long it should take me um, to do one question in the abstract reasoning uh, section and just yeah multiplied it by 10 I mean it's not it's not it's quick maths it's quick maths but it's not good maths you know what I'm trying to say setting market intervals will allow you to make sure that you're on track for time and that you're gonna be able to finish the whole set of questions in the allotted time during the exam tip number three is get dopamine from abstract reasoning so as you well know this is another Marius tip come on so I reached out to my colleagues and I came back with an answer but no I thought this was a good tip this really worked for me but basically what I did was I deleted my Instagram I deleted my Facebook for the few months leading up to my um, UCAT exam and instead when I was chilling um, when I had some downtime I went on my Medify and did you know 40 or 50 timed abstract reasoning questions and eventually I went through the question bank on Medify twice there were you know like a thousand questions on there when I was revising for it I ended up going through it twice by the end I was getting every question right and then I went into the exam you know I felt like I'd seen every single pattern in the universe um, and I went into the exam and just got like 860 obviously I didn't still max it out but that really brought my score up the next tip is to use speed reading apps and as I showed you in the keyboard shortcut section, um, some of those stems that they ask you to read and then answer questions on are incredibly long. Um, and personally, I could never hack it. I could never get through it in time um, and understand it quick enough to answer those questions. So improving your reading speed in the build up to your exam is gonna help massively. The conventional way of doing this that I tried to use but never got good at was to read an article once and then to try to remember um, what I gleaned from that article, try to write down what I gleaned from it. Doing something like this uh, using speed reading apps um, might be very useful. One of these apps is called Outread the Speed Reading Trainer. Um, so yeah, this, this one of my colleagues recommend um, spending some time using this app um, and eventually um, improving your reading speed and doing better on the verbal reasoning section. A little sly side tip for the verbal reasoning section that someone else gave me was to just be well read. Basically, the reason for this is the fact that a lot of the topics they write um, their stems on and ask you questions on are basically general knowledge um, topics, like, I don't know, World War II, a lot of them are political, and if you know the answer already, you don't have to try to look for it in the stem. You can just put the answer and move on and that will gain you a, a hell of a lot of time for the next load of questions if you already know the answer already. Obviously the caveat to that is strictly speaking, they could put a, a false answer in there um, to just check that you've been reading the stem. But I don't think this, this really happens like in, in reality. So yeah, be well read, maybe that will help. The next tip someone gave me is to keep notes on the situational judgment test. So personally, in the first year I took the exam, uh, I weirdly got a band three um, in the SJT. And obviously some graduate medical schools look at the SJT and want you to be getting a band one or a band two. Um, so band three, I was slipping. Um, and I found it weird because, you know, my moral code is obviously strong. Um, but to the second year when I was preparing, I did all the questions on the Medify question bank. I read the little explanation, 
that told you why the answer was was that particular answer and I kept notes on on those ones that I got wrong and basically over time you get a feel for the way that they want you to think about various ethical problems with the four pillars of ethics and and all the things like that so the next tip is for the decision making section and that is to use Venn diagrams or use circles that allow you to visualize population groups and subgroups and I think the best way to actually um, understand how to use this um, particular strategy is to draw it out and use an example. So this is the problem, not all pupils in a high school study history but all pupils in high school who study history also study English. Some pupils who study history also study geography. So these are little bastards, these questions, but if you draw circles for different population subgroups, uh, they can get much easier, I think. So, firstly, not all pupils in a high school study history, but all pupils who study history study English. So we can draw one circle for all the pupils in this high school. So there's a population um, within this high school of pupils that study history. All pupils in this high school who study this history also study English. So we can assume that the circle for English, so this is the history circle, the circle for English can be the same size or bigger because all people who study history also study English. Some pupils who study history also study geography. So we, if we draw the geography circle, it's gonna overlap with the history circle. So if we were to go down to the questions now, we can find some pupils who study English also study history. Um, yes, obviously that's true because, um, you know, we can see this population there. And I think once you've drawn out these, these um, circles for the different population subgroups, you can just work your way down through the, the list of questions there and, and figure out the answers quite easily or else that really worked for me. So that is it. That's all the tips I was able to collect from my, my colleagues who all did very well in the UCAT. I hope there was some reasonably useful stuff in there that you can take into your own preparation. Um, and good luck for the UCAT if it's coming up this year. Mm -hmm.